What's up, mob? Hey, it's a week off, but guess what? I'm not taking a week off. Uh, we still got news. Adam Cincerillo retired, so what does Kawasaki do? Are they going to leave that bike for the outdoors? I'm going to let you know what the plan is. I'm going to touch on some MXGP because, well, it's an awesome series, and the guy who's leading it is coming here next year for that Kawasaki team. And I'm going to show you who some scumbags are in this industry and let's stop them. Guys, check out the MMA page. This is Justin Janes. I did an interview with him over at Extreme Couture and this was one of the best post-fight speeches I've ever seen. So I'm just going to cut it and put it right here. But if you want more, head over to the MMA channel and subscribe. So thanks guys. Here's Justin and we'll get right into this. The last three years of my life have been the time. I've had nose surgery, hand surgery, neck surgery. I lost my UFC contract. I lost all my money in a split decision when I bet on myself. But all you motherfuckers out there that are in the dumps right now, just keep persevering and keep getting up in the morning. Damn it! Let me tell you guys, my motivation is my son. I've lost five fights in a row, and I thought I was going to retire, especially after neck surgery. But I wake up, I see my son's picture, and it motivates me to get up and train and train and get better. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. The first thing everybody asks as soon as a rider retires, like literally, I'm agents started calling Kawasaki right after this happened. Who's riding the bike outdoors? What are they going to do? Because Kawasaki has already allotted that budget for Adam Cincerello. They planned on him racing. So they have enough parts, staff, and everything lined up for him to go race outdoors. What do they do with all of that? A lot of times, they'll put another rider in there. They'll grab somebody, a, you know, a Freddie Noren, Time Masterpool, or... The one that everyone was talking about was Dylan Ferrandis. But I'll be perfectly honest with you. I don't want to see Dylan Ferrandis. I want to see what he does on this Honda. That Phoenix team looks really good. He is a past outdoor champion. He could easily get in the mix. Is he going to beat Jet? I don't know. Is Tomac going to be there? Eh, I, think he, I think he probably will. If, if Tomac can get some more good results in Supercross and it doesn't go in the tank, I think he's going to go outdoors. Kawasaki is planning on leaving that seat vacant, which is so silly. Why would they do that? I don't get that. When you've already allotted the parts, the staff, the budget, it's just, it doesn't make sense to me. And it's not a good sign, not a good look for Kawasaki. Yes, they've got Jason Anderson. And, well, he's not an outdoor specialist. He's got to win. He, he can podium consistently. But he's not a guy that's going to be battling. If they got Ferrandis you know, and they would probably have to buy him out of his Phoenix contract because Phoenix Honda has all that money allotted for him to go racing. I know it's a little bit tough, but I would still like to see them go after a Ferrandis, give him a shot. And yes, it would only be for the outdoors. So another guy that I think could really benefit and maybe Kawasaki's doing this. I don't know. Austin Forkner has had in his contract forever that he gets to ride a 450 at some point. Question is, is he healthy enough? Sounds like he's coming back. He just got LASIK surgery. I don't know how long. Honestly, I'm not familiar with LASIKs. I don't know how long that keeps you out. I don't know if he's going to be returning next weekend or if he's returning. He, he's trying to return for Supercross. I do know that. And I think he probably will be back next weekend. Depends on how he looks. If he looks good, you know what? Screw it. Put him on the 450 for outdoors. Let's give him that opportunity. Maybe that 450 smooths him out. It happens to some of these guys that are kind of wild. They get on the 450 and they ride better. Maybe he's one of those guys. So, you know, Kawasaki leaving it stagnant? Come on. And if they don't do that, at least throw those parts at Masterpool and the HBI team or, you know, Freddie Noren and his team. Take all that stuff and put it into some efforts. Don't just let it go to waste, guys. That would just be such, that would be a crime to let all those parts and the support. Master Pool could be another great story, but I don't want to see him go over to the factory team. I want to see them give those parts to HBI. I really like when these smaller teams, they take these personalities that kind of need, they need a, a little bit different atmosphere than what the factories can offer. And HBI is one of those teams. They just need more money and more support. Kawasaki, give it to him. Jorge Prado is taking that seat for 2025. Yes, the MXGP champ and the guy who's lighting it on fire right now is headed over to Kawasaki for next year. Hey, if you head over to Complete Racing Solutions, get yourself an energy drink based off of your sweat rate. 
That's something that Coach Rob has figured out where you determine how much you sweat, how much you need to replenish, and they customize a drink to make it to compensate for your sweat rate. So head over to Complete Racing Solutions and get your customized recovery drink. Epic Garage Designs. They, they have the coolest stuff. Travis does an amazing job at sourcing you know, racks, uh, cabinets, flooring, and even blinds if you're in the Las Vegas area. Hit up epicgaragedesigns.com or Epic Blinds, either one. They will get you dialed in. And speaking of Jorge Prado, the guy who's coming over here next year with Kawasaki, man, is he on fire in the GPs, winning five out of six motos. He's got a 49-point lead over Jeffrey Hurlings. Yes, I know Hurlings is in third, and I believe Tim Geyser is in second. But that's a lot right off the bat, three rounds. But the MXGP series is so much longer than the series we have in the United States. So 49 points is not insurmountable right now. It's so early. They have 20 rounds. They're three in. They got 17 to go. Yes, there's a lot of racing still to happen. And it looks like Jeffrey Hurlings is getting better. That second moto, he was charging up before he had a little spill and ended up in third. But it's going to be hard. I, I don't see right now, if you ask me, is Hurlings going to win some races? Probably. I don't think he's going to go on a run like we've seen where he just win, win, win. And barring any injury, which, listen, we're talking seven months and 20 rounds, that's a tough series to make it all the way through when you're traveling all the places these guys travel. But, yeah, Jorge Prado, I can't, I really hope he wins. That'll be really cool to see him come over here after winning the title two times in a row. In the MX2 class, there's another guy that I've watched for a long time. Jet Lawrence is the first time I heard his name. Jet Lawrence said he used to battle with Kai DeWolf when he was younger. And he said, Kai DeWolf is good. And yeah, he's finally realizing it. He's won all three races so far in the 250 class. He hasn't won every, you know, almost every moto, but he's got all three overalls. He's got the point lead and it's his teammate behind him, Luke, Lucas Kunin, and who's you know, his biggest competitor. And that's always fun to watch when you see teammates battling each other. You never know how that's going to go. And then also Lucas, much like the Lawrence brothers, he has a brother in there too, that's writing for KTM, which is a sister company to Husqvarna. But that's something I'm also watching. That's a couple brothers. And I'll be honest with you, I've heard that the Kunin brothers eventually want to end up here in the United States. So I'm also watching them pretty close to see how they develop. Ride strapped, get your goggles, shirts, sunglasses. One of the coolest companies in the industry. Ridestrap.com. Check them out. If you're shipping anything using a truck, hit up Precision Transport. It's pretransport.com, a family owned business that will not mess you around. They're not going to overcharge you. They're not going to do all the stupid things that a lot of these trucking companies do. Hit up pretransport.com. Now, I want to expose some dirt bags around this industry. There's a uh, a dealership called Triangle Cycle. And this was brought to my attention that they were robbed. Riverside Drive. In this surveillance video, you can see two people in masks approach the store and begin to cut through the chain and lock on the gate. It was an organized effort. I've never had people break in this organized. Uh, we've had people smash and grab stuff and little petty things, but we've never had anybody organize and stay here. They stayed here for over two hours in the process of trying to break in. Despite the store having several security cameras and signage in place, the thieves continued to take dirt bikes out of the store, knocking other bikes over during the process. The owner says they stole and damaged $30,000 worth of bikes in total. Reynolds is offering up to $1,500 for help in identifying the silver van as seen in these photos. He claims they loaded the bikes into the van while someone in another vehicle was helping keep watch. These people came in with a van, a grinder. This is a professional job and they robbed them of like seven or eight bikes, $30,000 worth of machinery. And there's got to be somebody around. So I'm going to put this video up here and somebody's got to be able to identify this. There's a $1,500 reward if you can help identify them. Let's catch these scumbags. It sucks. I've seen it happen to dealerships here in Las Vegas. And sometimes they, they claim them on insurance. Other times they don't want to because the insurance rates go way high. And this one, it looks like there were some bikes with some numbers on them. I'm hoping they weren't consignment bikes because that's also that also gets kind of sticky. But the dealerships that I've dealt with here are always really cool about that. If they ever take a bike on consignment, they're obviously responsible with it. And if something like this happens, they'll take care of the, the, you know, the customer. But 
let's find the dirt bags that did this and let's maybe retrieve those bikes. How about that? Thanks guys. Remember, subscribe. I appreciate it. And also the MMA channel, it's going really well. Getting some good reviews over there. Uh, please check it out. I'm getting really close to getting uh, monetized. Just need some more viewing hours and I need a thousand subscribers. I'm at like 920. So if you haven't done that yet, I would definitely appreciate it. Thanks guys. And I will catch you later.